welcome back. We are talking, uh, we are continuing off with that depressed polynomial um, for this example. And so now I'm going to use the, per, per, uh, the depressed information. And so that was one, what was it? Uh, three, negative three, and it was negative nine. Was that the information? Oh, should have been. This should have been negative here. That was my own bad. I forgot to put my own negative back in. Uh, and this should have been negative right here. Okay. So, yeah, that is correct. Um, so, then I bring this down. I, still, like, I continue my synthetic division. I bring this number down. Uh, cross. That becomes a zero. That becomes a zero. That becomes negative three positive nine, and that is a zero. And so at this point, I now have a term at x plus one, and I have a term at x plus three. And then now I have a new depressed polynomial down here. And this one, remember, because this one started at x cubed. So this is now x squared plus technically zero x minus three. And I can, I can uh, simplify that down as x squared minus three. So now I have my entire e my entire factored form right here. And so this tells me that I can go ahead and set each part equal and solve for my true zero. So here was my negative one rational zero, my negative three rational root zero. And then I also had one at, um, oh, sorry, it's only two rationals because if I set x squared uh, minus three equal, and the, that doesn't actually yield a factor that yields a complex number, right? Our imaginary roots. So that doesn't uh, necessarily work for us. So we're good to go there. So I've got those two, two answers right here that I just accidentally crossed out on my own. But yeah, so that's the, the in essence, that's the general thing when we do leading coefficients equal to zero. So if you can go ahead and plug in and start solving to figure out if it's zero, it's great. But once you start having uh, polynomials with degrees higher than three, that becomes complicated. And even at degree two, that becomes complicated to do that kind of math in our heads, especially without a calculator. So then that's where synthetic substitution comes in. We can start, um, dividing out and getting those terms and figure it out from there and kind of set that equal to zero. But what happens when our leading coefficient does not equal one? Should have said one again. Got some typos in my titles. This should have said one. Okay, what happens when my leading coefficient doesn't equal one? Then we follow what's called the rational zeros theorem and we follow this formula down here. If I have, um, a leading coefficient that, well, technically any, we can look at it like this. You look at the factor of your constant, which is that x to the zeroth term, and you divide it by the factors of your leading coefficient. And technically, this is true of all. It doesn't have to be the one not equal to one, but if you if your leading coefficient does equal to one, then on bottom, you would just have it divided by one. So that's why we don't really talk about that beforehand. So here I have an example. We have 3x cubed minus 7x squared uh, plus, minus 22x plus 8. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my possible uh, factors, my possible, sorry, my possible rational uh, zeros using that rational factor theorem. So here's that formula. So I'm going to look at the factors of 8 since that's my constant term. The factors of 3 on bottom. Factors of 8 are positive 1, or plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4, plus and minus 8. And factors of uh, on bottom are plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 3. Just to recall what I'm about to show you, this is kind of that butterflying. So I'm going to connect here, then connect here, connect here, connect there. And I'm just kind of connect each term. Then we're going to do one over the three and then over the three. And then like, that's just what that's going to show. So if you're a little confused about what my PowerPoint is showing. So those are all those terms right there. And then I simply simplify down to our true possible rational zeros. And why do I keep saying possible? Because you actually have to test them. Not all of them are going to be true um, factors. But again, that's a lot of stuff to test. Here we can make some logical deductions. What is going to be an acceptable factor? What is going to be uh, what can probably just be thrown out? And then we can start using the depressed polynomials to start uh, moving through this a lot quicker. And and in order to move quicker, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, just pretend that we already tested 
positive one, negative one, and positive two. And I'm going to go ahead and move on to negative two because all of the other ones are not going to give us anything that we want to work with. So I move on to negative two and I bring down for my synthetic. So I bring seven, negative seven, negative 22, and eight. And I bring down and I have three, then I have negative six, which becomes negative 13, which is 26, which is positive four negative eight and a zero. And there we go. There's our first term. So again, that becomes uh, X plus two. And the very next thing I'm going to do is check my depressed polynomial. My depressed polynomial is 3x squared minus 13x plus 4. Well, guess what? We're at our quadratic. I can go ahead and factor that out. And when I factor that out, that becomes 3x plus 1 times x minus 4. And guess what? Now we can set this part equal to 0 and go from there. And so this one we already knew. It was negative 2. This one's going to be negative 1 third. And this one is going to be positive 4. And you check these against your factors and look, there we go. There's our only ones right here is that negative 2, that negative 1 third, and the positive 4 uh, were our answers. And those were our true rational zeros. And then finally, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how does this work or not finally we're actually the upper uh, lower bounds. My apologies. We're going to talk about what happens when I have to uh, use a real world situation. So we have this video game model. Pause and take a moment to read it. But what's the real point of a word problem? We're going to pull out all of the appropriate information. So I went ahead and did that. Don't look at a crazy word problem. Just look at the important information. So I have an equation right here that's important that tells me uh, that tells me what we're going to be using, and that's great. I don't have to create an equation. Um, then we what important right here is that our number of games is sold in hours whereas X is the number of hours after release and what we're looking for is how long did it take to sell 400 games so what does how long mean well that's time and time is my X value so I'm looking for my X that means that what I'm gonna do is for that 400 is put that as my G of X but I can't put 400 because I have to remember that it was sold in hundreds therefore 400 sold in hundreds would simply be 4. And so I set that g of x equals to 4. So I plug in my whole g of x. And you know what? Now I'm recognizing it. Hey, that's a third degree polynomial. So if I bring that 4 over by subtracting from each side, I now have a polynomial set equal to 0. Well, what happens if we set it equal to 0? We can solve for x. So I'm going to use a synthetic substitution. And first I have to look for all my factors. There they are, here we go. And now I've got a synthetic substitution set up ready for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and test positive one and bring that down two, four, negative two, Ooh. negative two and negative four. And so if I follow my synthetic substitution, that's two, that's two, this becomes six, this is six, that's four, that's four, and that's zero. And so here's my new depressed polynomial, two x squared plus six x plus four. And um, at this point, I can factor that out. So I recognize I have x minus one and Ooh, I think I made a mistake somewhere. So hold on one second. Nope, no mistakes. Nope, that's correct. Ah, my bad. So we have that x minus one. Sorry, I thought I had a mistake. And then we're going to factor out this term on bottom. And what does that factor look like? That factor looks like two times x plus two times x plus one. And we solve for those. And so there we have a root at one, at negative two. This one's just kind of going to disappear. And at negative one. Time cannot be negative. So those answers automatically go away. Therefore, we only have one answer, which tells us at one hour we have sold 400 games. And so if we look at that, we can write our literature statement, you know, therefore it took one hour to sell 400 games, or you can say the video game company took one hour to sell 400 games, etc. The final thing we're going to talk about is the upper and lower bounds. Here's our formal definition, but I'm just going to go ahead and show that to you. So I have this uh, function over here, h of x, and that's going to be equal to all of this and I went ahead and plugged it into a calculator and got an interval where my real zeros are going to look or be from that's from negative one to seven and so all I'm literally going to do is plug those values in and test those 
Okay, and so I would test at negative 1. It's 2, negative 11, 2, negative 44, and negative 24. And so I just go ahead and test 